Greetings everyone, and welcome to LEGO Rewind, where we take another look at old retired LEGO themes. Today is something of a milestone for this show. When I created the UR LEGO Rewind tier on Patreon, I wasn't sure anyone would bite. But as of now, we have our first patron-sponsored episode, generously brought to you by... The Idiot! No, that's not me being mean, that really is their name. Their pick was unexpected, but probably shouldn't be. In the rough, unpolished early days of LEGO Rewind, I released a Technic episode that disappointed some Technic fans because I mainly focused on silly action figures that I like and didn't talk much about the more nuts and bolts side of Technic that they grew up with. For years, people have asked for a proper Technic follow-up, but I couldn't think of much to add until comparing notes with the idiot and noticing a few things. So let's go back 45 years. Jeez, it was only 40 when the original episode went up. In the late 70s and early 80s, it was common to see town and space paired together as part of Lego Land, along with castles sometimes. But Technic was the odd one out, mostly marketed separately, and I think it's created a Mandela effect in a lot of people's heads like Technic came later. But it actually crept out a year before the first real minifigs, when Lego still used these and... Ugh, these... I'm a little surprised brick dolls were never included with the earliest Technic builds, as they're just the right size to drive most of them. But I guess that would have betrayed the image of a slightly more mature, advanced form of building that they wanted to give Technic. Ooh, it's just like a real engine! Lego Technical Sets. Detailed working models for experienced Lego builders of 9 and over. And now let's build a Jeep! Yet as much as Technic may have been its own thing with gears and axles, hoses, belts and springs, it was still mostly Lego bricks and plates, just with holes in them. These pinholes were compatible with the studs on top of bricks, and even Technic axles lined up so we could measure their length by how many studs across they could reach. This is so basic, I don't think it even crosses most LEGO collectors' minds. Normal bricks you mostly just stacked up, but this gave you new directions to build in, and there were even packs of just spare parts to expand your standard builds, or to fill out one of these giant chassis. I don't know how I feel about those. It's a good way to make a big car while keeping the price down, and the assumption may have been that you'd already have a bunch of your own spare pieces to dress it up, but it's still selling you half a set. I think they were just still figuring out how to make builds this huge. Lego sets had a longer shelf life back then, so those first half a dozen or so 70 sets lingered for a few years. But releases picked up in the 80s, bringing us hinges that could angle axles to form roll cages, a seemingly small change that gave some vehicles more realism, though most builds were still pretty abstract and skeletal. This decade also saw the aptly named Lego Technic guys, much taller, more articulated minifigs with ears and noses. I like the personality they give the Technic world, turning it into a red-green sort of place, where function is everything, most builds looking half-finished but doing what they need to. Unless you're in the Arctic, where these gappy structures offer no protection from the elements. We also see a more complete car towards the end of the decade similar to that chassis. And there was even a Transformer, 35 years before Optimus Prime became a LEGO set. I like the windshield eyes and steering wheel pupils. And I really like how the box art changed heading into the 90s. The blue gives these still mostly red and yellow builds a nice pop, and I especially appreciate the functions detailed as if these were actual blueprints you'd use to build a real car at a garage or a factory. And it wasn't long before colors like black and white and gray became more prominent, further adding to that hard-working industrial vibe. It gave this era of Technic a good atmosphere, which I think is perfectly captured by 1994 Supercar, with so many angles that previous giant cars didn't have. Even almost 30 years later, it still looks looks kind of modern. It's surreal. This is where more familiar Technic elements start creeping in. Just a few at first. Lift arms that connect from the side like Technic bricks, but were completely smooth and studless. Connectors with increasingly funky shapes, some with fixed angles that made stronger cages. Cables and large hoses made of soft, bendable plastic that could create curves. And in a few short years, these would dominate Technic. I imagine this must have alienated a lot of Technic fans who preferred the more traditional, bricky look, but I'm fascinated by the shapes they were able to accomplish with these weird new molds. A lot of these sets had seats for the LEGO Technic guys, though you still have to buy them separately much of the time. I want to see one driving this giant robot from its nose chair, that'd be fantastic. Shouldn't surprise anyone that I love this yellow submarine. This era of Technic is such a vibe. Most of these backgrounds seem to be set on that Technic planet I covered in episode 36. You know, the weird one. These are probably the coolest backgrounds you'll ever see in anything LEGO related. There are Technic holes in the architecture. Here's a workshop in a desert where the only law is this guy. Fugitive gangs are roaming the planet, destabilizing Technic constructions. We need you to help Dan Thunder catch them. Dan Thunder? 
Wouldn't be related to Johnny Thunder by any chance. Thunder to base. Hello? The gangs are driving some radical machines and things are pretty tough out here. Eh, probably not. The pieces just kept getting weirder, with flexible rubbery axles and panels with nostrils that gave some builds a very futuristic and even alien look. And they were even the perfect size for those ribbed hoses to feed through. So it's all got a purpose. It's a system, baby. And going into 2000, they wanted us to know that we were entering the boldest era of Technic yet, with a new logo and chromed out packaging that kinda ate into the backgrounds, but is decently balanced most of the time. You even saw this branding on construction lines like Rubble Riders and 2001's Bionicle. You might have heard of that one. Unfortunately, this era was not without casualties, 2000 being the last year we ever saw the LEGO Technic guys. They were just some of many, many molds that were quickly scuttled during one of LEGO's darkest eras. I'm actually surprised that panels survived well into the mid and late 2000s, where Technic had probably the cleanest look and the most complex engineering to date. Bricks being almost completely absent, save the occasional throwback release set, though you still saw some clever use of Technic bricks like these. By 2010, those funky late 90s Technic panels were replaced by smoother hoods, fenders, and spoilers. These gave larger Technic builds a new identity, trading that skeletal gappy look to create far more accurate depictions of real license cars. Like half of the larger Technic builds these days are just licenses, from Bugatti to John Deere to Boeing. Oh no. And the closer they got to replicating the real thing, the more I checked out. These hyper-accurate models are nice for people who are into that, but I'll always be more drawn to an oddball, futuristic interpretation of a race car than a contemporary one that looks like you could actually drive it. That said, the smaller builds mostly retain that 90s sharpness and funk, even with the new paneling. And Technic just kept going from there. Here we are in the 2020s, and Technic is mostly the same as it's been since 2000. The lift arms are there, the panels and gears and axles are there, and it's mostly great, but it's hard to not feel like Technic is stagnating a little. It's still evolving, just in ways so small, so subtle. Like how video game technology used to advance in huge leaps every couple years, but now they're so advanced, so detailed and complex, that new jumps are less noticeable. Could we be just a few years away from another evolutionary leap that'll define this decade as Technic reinvents itself again? Eh, probably not. I'm not sure we'll ever see a shift like that again, but there is another shift that's occurred. One that's also subtle, but has big implications. Before Technic, LEGO didn't really have functions. Rotors and wheels spun freely. Then Technic came along with all its innovations, and while it started out as just LEGO with a few extra tricks, it steadily branched further away from that plainness into something that no longer resembles what most people picture when they hear the name LEGO. But something funny happened over the last eh, 15 or so years. You notice how almost everything has a function now? You turn a knob or push a lever and wings flip out or a claw snaps shut or just straight yeets a guy? Yeah, that's Technic. All those Technic bricks? This is where they went. And it's not just gimmicks, it's stability, it's sturdier builds. It's easy to forget, but these are Technic pieces. It's like as Technic veered further away in its own direction, part of it was reabsorbed back into normal LEGO. And now these pieces are so normalized, so ubiquitous, that Technic is part of systems DNA. Again, anything that features some flip-out gimmick or good old working suspension, it's all Technic. To a degree. I think that's pretty cool. Technic shows no sign of slowing down, but if something ever did happen to it, I could take comfort knowing it still exists in virtually every LEGO set that isn't just pure bricks. Special thanks to the idiot for funding this one. I hope it was a Technic episode you guys have waited for all these years. To support my work, check out my books on Amazon and itch.io, and my Patreon page, where you'll see these videos a week early, your name in the credits, patron-exclusive content, a patron-exclusive Discord server, and if you're like the idiot, your own LEGO Rewind episode. See you next time. Toodles! Ready. The lab is now testing a new LEGO Technic submarine with new air tank. Oops, the sub is drowning. We can build a LEGO Technic truck instead, which you can program to run on its own. What's happening now? Stop that truck! Stand back.